Welcome back to See Me Use Odoo. My name is Seth Meyer and I'm an implementation consultant here at Odoo. And today I want to talk about the RMA process and how we are able to track that within Odoo inventory. So some companies, when they receive products, have RMA agreements to uh, have the ability to return products back to their vendors for repair and replacement. And we want the ability to track that as it goes through that process. My client here has these requirements. They need the ability to track products sent back to the vendor for that RMA process. They need the ability to track product coming back into our warehouse from the, that RMA process. And they need the ability to maintain the same serial numbers throughout the process. And so let's hop into it. I'm in this database here and we have just these core apps. We have uh, I really only downloaded inventory and contacts. And what we'll do is we'll hop into inventory here and we're gonna need to go to configuration and to settings first because we need to activate locations within our warehouses. And so to do that, we can scroll down uh, until we find locations here. We see storage locations down here at the bottom. We can check that and be sure to save. Now that we've saved that, what we want to do is create some operation types that we can assign locations to. So from here, we can go to configuration and to operation types. And here are the common operation types that we have, receipts, internal transfers, delivery orders, returns. We're going to create a couple more to track this RMA process. We'll create new here, and we can call this one RMA. And this will be a delivery type of operation. And we'll have a prefix here, and the prefix is what we'll see on all those orders. Think of that uh, RMA slash 0001, that's what that prefix is going to be. So we are already are going to have those products have serial numbers, so we don't need to create new ones. We are going to use those existing numbers throughout. The next thing we want to do is uh, create a return type. And so that return type is going to be that other operation type called RMA returns. Odoo is incredibly intuitive and we are able to create operation types on the fly like this by selecting create and edit. And this pop-up menu appears where we are able to config, uh, continue that configuration uh, of this other operation type. So we can select type of operation. This one is going going to be a receipt. And the prefix for this, we can say R-M-A-R. -R. So it is going to be a return. Again, we will use existing serial numbers. Our return type here, we can uh, say our return type uh, will be RMA. We need to save it before we can select it as RMA. And we can simply select Save here. The next thing we want to do is create some new locations. We could select save here in this RMA. Let's hop out back into our inventory overview to see these two new operation types quite visible to us here. So let's make these locations. So we can go to uh, configuration here and to locations. And what we want to do is create locations uh, that are uh, going to be a child of the vendor location, that's going to be an RMA uh, location for the vendor. So we could select new here, and we can say RMA. And the parent location for this, again, is going to be partners slash vendors. We could switch the location type from internal location to a vendor location here, and we can select save. Now we can hop out of locations here and we can go back to our uh, to our operation types, but we don't have to go to configurations to do that. We can go to these three little dots and down to configuration. So we can select these individual uh, individual operation types. So we have that RMA uh, return here and we want to change these locations. So the default source location for this RMA return is going to be partners vendors, but it's going to be specifically partners vendors RMA because we are sending products to our RMA location. The default location is going to be our warehouse stock. Now, the default location in your business could be 
anywhere that you want to send to return your products to. But in this case, we could just say warehouse stock. We could select save here and hop back out of our inventory overview. And we'll need to do the same thing to our RMA operation type. We can go to these three little dots and select configuration. From here, we need to choose a default source location that is already set as warehouse stock, so we don't need to alter that at all. But our default destination location can change to partners slash vendors slash RMA. Now you can see how this flow is starting to work. Our RMA is going to, our RMA operation type is going to send products from our warehouse stock to our partner slash vendor slash RMA location. Once we return that product, it is going to move from our partner, partner's vendor's RMA location back to our warehouse stock. So we want to uh, first have the ability to really designate uh, on an RMA form that a product has been returned. Because uh, in Odoo, we won't be able to close out uh, that RMA order, but we can cr use uh, our studio functionality to um, to create a new field that designates a form uh, or an RMA has been uh, returned. And so it looks like we still need to download studio here. So let me take a quick pause and download studio. So now that we have my best friend studio downloaded, we can now uh, create an RMA order so that we can dive into it and edit it to make sure that it fits our needs. So let's create a new one. And as soon as we select that, we can create uh, some studio fields by selecting our little pencil and wrench there that will bring us into studio mode. Now for this, uh, we can create a simple checkbox here uh, because all we need to do is designate that a return has been completed. So we can say, returned as the label. Perfect. It is not a required field because we cannot require that it be checked off as soon as we create an RMA. Uh, it won't be invisible and it also won't be read only. So we can go ahead and close this here. And so now that we have this set up, let's uh, try this out and see how it works for us. So we can go back to our inventory overview and to kick this off, we'll have to jump into our RMA operation type and create a new operation type. The delivery address here will be um, our uh, front Azure interior here. The operation type is gonna be RMA. The source location, uh, as you can recall, is going to be that default location, uh, warehouse stock, and we need a product. So that's something that we'll need to do before we hop, uh, before we continue this process is create a product that uh, is serialized so that we can make sure that the functionality of the serial number uh, is working. And so why don't we go ahead and open products here and let's open up a new tab and create a new product. We could select new here and call this something very original. We can call this RMA product. Make sure that it is set as a storable product so that we are able uh, to uh, track it, track it and track the um, uh, the so that we'll be able to track the stock of it. Okay, we'll go to this inventory tab here. And for traceability, we need to make sure that we're able to trace by unique serial numbers. And we could select save. Now that we've selected save, let's receive some of that product into our warehouse so we can assign serial numbers to it. So we can go to our inventory overview here and to our receipts. And let's create a new receipt and we are going to receive from, let's pick a vendor here. We can receive from Azure Interior because of course that will be our vendor that we are res, uh, returning that to. So uh, from here, we can create a uh, receipt for our RMA product and select validate. We'll get a user error that says you cannot validate this transfer if no quantities are reserved nor done. Uh, to force uh, that transfer, switch to edit mode and set the done quantities. So what it is saying to do is to hop into these details here and add a line to add our serial number. So we can add 
a serial number here, 0001, and select confirm. And so we have this here. Uh, and so now that we have our uh, we have our serial number set, we could select validate. And now we have received that product. Let's go to traceability to confirm we've received that product. Yes, we have one product, uh, the serial number 0001 is in our warehouse stock. Now from here, let's go to our inventory overview and create an RMA order. We can go to new here. And again, we're gonna send to Azure Interior because those were our vendors and we can create a new product. Or rather, instead of creating a product, of course, we have that RMA product that we'll be using. It will give us a dropdown of the potential serial numbers we can choose from. And of course, we only have that one to choose from. And so we're going to select 0001. From here, we can select validate. And it looks like they're uh, giving us this option. You're about to confirm the delivery order by SMS text message. Uh, this feature is easily disabled from the settings of inventory by clicking disable SMS. Uh, so this was something that I uh, was unaware was already configured in this database. Let's disable SMS. We don't need to send any text messages to confirm this delivery. Uh, but of course, we can confirm this delivery right here. Let's go to traceability to see where it went. Okay, so we just sent our product 0001 from our stock to RMA. If we want to track that within our stock, we can go to reporting and to moves history to see that product is moved from warehouse stock to partner slash vendor slash RMA. Different way to view that is to go to stock. And from here, we can find RMA. C has been zeroed out because of course it is not, uh, we stock will in will uh, track our internal locations and of course that vendor location is not an internal location and so now uh, once we have received uh, once we have sent that product to RMA the next thing for us to do is hop out of uh, the stock here we can go into RMA to see the orders that have been created we can go to this RMA order for the product that we have created or, or rather the RMA order that we created. We also have the options to look up the RMA order if we have that on file. Uh, so we could say 001 here, or really any, uh, any fields that we have, we can add to the search bar here. So let's open this up. And what we're gonna wanna do is return this stock. And this uh, is going to pop up for us. It is going to uh, ask how many we are receiving back into our location, uh, our return location. And of course we only had the one, so it's going, to, uh, it's, we're going to receive that, uh, that one product back. And our return location is already set as warehouse stock. And so we can select return here. And it is, uh, we are automatically sent to our RMA return operation type because, uh, we have set that as our return operation. And so uh, this return operation is saying that we are receiving from Azure Interior uh, one product uh, and getting sent to our warehouse stock. We'll need to open up these details here to see that the product that we are receiving is that 0001. And we just have to confirm that we are receiving that product by uh, entering that in. We could also enter that in by selecting uh, validate here. Oops, we're not receiving more than one. That is not something that will happen unless we add that uh, manually. And so the easiest way we could do that is just select validate here. Okay, it's asking us if we wanted to create a back order. We could say no back order because we don't have any products that are back ordered. All right, so we are receiving that one product back into our stock. That back order was just because we uh, had accidentally added a second one. Uh, and so it was saying that we only were returning half the amount of products that uh, was scheduled to return. Uh, so that was just a little low doopsie, but we figured that one out. Uh, let's hop back to through our breadcrumbs, uh, back to this RMAR. 
where we have received our product back to our warehouse stock. We can check on this by going to reporting and to moves history. And we can see that we have received that one uh, product from our partner slash vendor slash RMA back to our warehouse stock with the same serial number. As far as I'm concerned, we have met the requirement to track products sent back to the vendor uh, for RMA, the ability to track products coming back to our warehouse from RMA, and the ability to maintain the same serial numbers throughout the process. And let's go to stock just to see this in a different view. We can type in RMA here and see that our product is in our stock location and is back from our vendor. The last bit of information here is that checkbox, right? So if we hop back to our inventory overview and go to our RMA process, imagine we have a, a very large list of these RMA orders. We wanna make sure that we're able to check which ones uh, we can see uh, are completed. And so right now we aren't really able to see that it's completed. And so we can hop into this and we can check is returned here. And we could select save. And now that we have checked that it is a returned order, we can go back to our list view here and hop back into Studio so that we can add that checkbox within our list view. So again, we're gonna to go to existing fields and type in return. We'll click and drag and put that anywhere we want. We could put that right here uh, and select close. And just like that, we have a return checkbox uh, for those orders that have been returned. Uh, again, we just have to check that box manually when we have returned that product, uh, but we are able to filter if we go to our add custom filters uh, and go down to our returned here and select uh, returned is yes, we can select apply. And of course, this isn't gonna show any difference because we only have that one order, but if we have 50 orders and 10 of them have been returned, those 10 with the, with the box checked off will be the only 10 that appear. And so we are able to cleanly see the products uh, that have been returned. Uh, and on the other side of the coin, if we wanted to see the products that haven't been rec uh, returned, we can simply select returned is no, uh, in which all those blank return boxes uh, will appear and the ones that have been returned uh, won't appear in that view. So again, that is how we use the uh, Odoo inventory app to track our RMA process. So uh, definitely try this in your uh, your database, definitely recommend always a uh, creating a duplicate and testing, testing, testing before we put that to production. I want to thank you all so much for watching. Definitely uh, leave comments about about your thoughts. Definitely uh, throw me a like and a subscribe if you'd like to and uh, catch you in the next video.